Nine of the 12 players used during the 2005 Ashes came from state schools. However, since Paul Collingwood retired in 2011, no English batsman from a state school has held down a regular spot in the national team. The numbers jar considering only 7% of British children are privately educated. Is there a problem in getting state school cricketers through the system? We're in Withenshaw, South Manchester, to meet Tracy. Now, Tracy is the youth development officer here at Withenshaw Cricket Club. How many junior teams do you have? Well, at the moment, our junior teams have depleted somewhat, and I think that's a bit of a national problem, um, especially in kind of areas like ours. Um, How much so? Five to six years ago, there was 150 kids on this field. That was under nines, under 11s, under 12s, 13s, right the way through to under 18s. You can see for yourself how those numbers have dropped. What do you think cricket would offer the community then? We're about mixing together, we're a cohesive club. We want people to learn and get on with each other. If you don't, you know, this is a microcosm of the world. You know, you're on the cricket field, you're playing with people from all different cultures, different backgrounds, you know, social statuses, but everybody's the same out there. You get a wicket, you're out. What is the future here at Woodenshaw Cricket Club then? future at the moment I hold my hand on my heart and I think we've got a good future I'm always an optimist um, we've got the all-stars that are coming through the little ones are coming through get that into the head cricket's a really fun sport I think we need to really get the links back with the schools if we don't get those links we're losing the potential to continue cricket in Withenshaw and South Manchester because these girls and boys are the seniors of the future otherwise you know What's going to happen to cricket in 25 years' time when all these have grown up and gone to do something different? One of the schemes to address the decline in state school representation is hubs like this one in Hull. Since 2011, the Marlebone Cricket Club Foundation have offered free and focused coaching exclusively to cricketers from state schools. There are currently 54 active hubs across the UK. Closer. I'm gonna be closer. Stay low. As a child myself, I was, I was very lucky to play the very high standard of cricket, and I never had anything like this. You know, I, I genuinely believe if we had something like this when I was about, when I was younger, the, the success that I had would have not just been me, but many other people as well. When I was playing, especially when I was at Yorkshire, I think about 80% of the team came from privately educated schools which is wonderful and fine, but they have access to those facilities all of the time. But players like myself from Hull, I mean, being a Hull lad myself, we didn't have access to those facilities. You know, we used to turn up to games, we'd have no kit, and, you know, we'd all share in from the same bag, things like that. For us, that's things that still happen in Hull now. We do have the distinction as well as there's a, there's a lot of poverty and socioeconomic problems. These guys now, they're, they're all part of a community. You know, they're a part of a group of boys and girls who've had an opportunity, and that opportunity has, has led to them making friends as well. You know, it's not just a case of, oh, come and play some cricket and we'll see what we can do. It, it's more than that. So the kids that we see in front of us here today, they're all from state schools? Yes, they are, yeah. Um, the, the MCC Foundation um, had the priority of giving free coaching to state school kids. So all of the kids that we see here today, all of the over 100 plus that we have in the winter are all state school children. We're not just attracting people from the local area, we're, we're attracting people from slightly further afield because they need that free coaching. You know, it's a benefit to them. And they've really developed. We've got some kids here today who've, who've gone on to do much higher things than what we ever thought was believable from this. Oh, he's nailed it. Is that your go-to then? Uh, well, it's normally just like a good length, really. Yeah. Yeah. How have these sessions helped with your skill as well? Because it seems like, you know, from Matty, you're getting really good, yeah. solid coaching. Yeah. Yeah, he's giving me advice to like take into my games and, you know, it's improving with my stats. They've improved over the past few years, so it's really good. Where do you think you'd be if you didn't have a scheme like this? I don't think I'd be at the standard I do play at. Yeah. Because it, it helps me a lot. It's just the coaching and things, just being around other people that they, everybody helps each other. Three, two, one, stop. Yes. I'm down, Tim. In October 2016, Durham were relegated from Division 2 and docked 48 points for the following season after falling into debt and almost going out of business. 
While they now operate on a tighter budget with some high profile departures, it means they must place a greater emphasis on nurturing talent from the local area, something which they have long excelled at. Neil Colleen, who is in charge of Durham's second team, is a key part of that. I suppose after what's happened in the last couple of years with Durham and so you're having to rely on those young players a bit more now? That was a huge blow for us as a club, um, what happened with, with, um, with the sanctions that we were put under. And, um, and I think initially you, you sort of think, well, we're going to struggle a little bit. Um, but if you look at it from the other side of things, it, it becomes a huge opportunity for some of the younger players. With regards to the Durham Academy, how, much, how many of those players, let's say a percentage off the top of your head, would be from working class or state school backgrounds? Um, I think it'd be quite a high percentage, to be honest. Um, we don't have the volume of private schools that they do in other parts of the country. And I also think that because of the, the strength of club cricket up in the northeast, that, that players kind of come from that as well as, as schools. And my son's involved in the system. He, he goes to a, a comprehensive school nearby, and, and they play very little cricket. They play, I think they compete in one competition and they don't really do any cricket during school time whatsoever. And that was the same as when I came through. We did no cricket whatsoever in school. I, I got into cricket by somebody saw me throwing a cricket ball in a sports day competition. Should cricket be in state schools? Do you reckon it would make a difference up here? No, I don't, I don't think so. Just because club cricket's so strong and so driven and everyone wants to win, I just think if you had more teams from schools and stuff like that, and the younger lads aren't going to be able to play with men. And that's where you learn the most, I think, from when you play club cricket with men. The more experience is in like, knowledge and how to work things out and you play with them, that's when you're real mature as a cricketer, I think. It's been fascinating for me speaking to the guys here about club cricket in Durham. They really seem to be of the opinion that if cricket were to move into state schools, they'll be pulling players in so many different directions that it'll actually dilute the quality that's coming through. <laughs>